Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. It's been nearly three whole years since the last Friday Night Funk and Lost Bits video on this channel. Yeah, remember this game? And although I got my Kickstarter CD a while ago with little to no updates, I was really starting to wonder if the full game would even be released at all, at least this decade. Well, although the full game still isn't here, the devs have finally released a new Weekend 1 update to the game, and this added some new characters, songs, cutscenes, as well as some stuff that was previously left over unused. So today, we'll be going over some of the found bits that were added to the game, as well as chat about a few bits of new unused content that's left over. So smash that Funkin' like button below, it's time to check out some more Friday Night Funkin' Lost Bits. Alright, so to kick things off here, let's start with some content that was previously left over unused in the game, but has now been re-added back in. And of course, the first one's an easy one, with Pico now actually being the character that you play as in Weekend 1 here, these four animations of Pico missing a note that were previously left over unused in earlier builds are now finally used whenever you miss a note in a corresponding direction. And interestingly, they appear basically the same here as they did in the last update three years ago, so I'd be curious to know how long after the last update this level was put together. In any case, Pico has been shown to be a planned, playable character for forever, so it's really cool to finally see him added this way, and also to finally play as a character who isn't the boyfriend. Then next, something I don't think I've covered in my previous videos is that in the source code of the game was an odd and unused menu titled Latency State, and this was an early attempt at putting together a menu to test and offset audio and video latency, something typically seen in rhythm games. And well, as of this current update, this menu was finished and finally implemented into the game. So if you've ever felt like your game's audio wasn't syncing well with when the arrows should be pressed, this menu should help mitigate that. And then lastly, for the previously unused things that have now been added back in, is this pose of Skid and Pump. As of this new update, this pose of the duo was seemingly implemented in the Spookies track of Week 2. Now next up, in previous videos I've gone over some of the unused images left over in the game, like the Week 54 prototype image of a 3D model of the boyfriend, as well as a bunch of the other screenshot images, and thankfully, there are a few new unused graphics that have been added in this update. First up, there's this placeholder graphic for the judgement when the player misses a note. Now it's obviously incredibly placeholder-like, and thankfully enough, the instructions here were followed, as this temporary asset did of course get replaced in the game with proper graphics. And then, after this, we have a few early and unused graphics for the new Weekend 1 stage. The first of these being a set of concept sketches of both Pico as well as Darnell fighting during the song Blazin'. We got everything from them punching, getting hit, guarding, dodging, taunting, and more. Then also for this new week is this early concept sketch for Weekend 1's backdrop, and here of course we can see a much less detailed early look at the background including the walls, incomplete overpass, as well as this hologram or TV screen featuring a grumpy face. Now those unused graphics aren't nearly as funny as some of the other ones we've seen in the past, but thankfully we got more of those as well. So first up, we have this image of the boyfriend wearing a chef's hat and holding a hot dog, because why not? And then to add to the screenshots of the 4chan and Twitch messages we've seen before, a new image of a tweet was added titled, Hall of Fame Tweet, which has a user named Gab, suggesting the girlfriend be seen on a large speaker, and apparently this is actually the tweet that persuaded the devs to plop her on top of the large speakers in the game. And then lastly, we also have these UI graphics for the new Erect and Nightmare difficulties for the Story Mode. Although these new difficulties are seen in free play, they haven't been implemented in the Story Mode yet it seems, leaving these unused for now, but I'm assuming these will eventually get added in there as well. And now for a bit of audio stuff, it appears that there are two unused tracks that have been added in this update, seemingly to accompany the newly designed result screen seen after completing a song. And these tracks are apparently intended for when the player would get a perfect score as well as a really bad score respectively. So first, let's give the bad score track a listen. And 
And now the track for getting a perfect score, which obviously sounds a lot happier. And really, that's about all of the unused and reused content that was added into this game, but we're not quite done yet. So pressing certain keys either in the main menu or during a song to bring up a secret menu or toggle graphics has basically become a staple of this game at this point, and this update continues that legacy. For starters, the first secret pops up if you wait around on the title screen for a long while, then the game will start to play an almost 2 minute animation of the boyfriend battling the girlfriend's dad, before being turned into a marketable toy by the girlfriend's mother. And this is actually basically a 2 minute commercial for this toy, as it's actually something you can buy right now with real money on the website listed here. Honestly, kind of a cool way to promote this, though I wonder how many players will actually wait around on the title screen to see this secret video. What's extra interesting though is that this clip from this video seems very reminiscent of this concept sketch which I went over in one of my previous videos, though obviously with the father this time instead, but it's very possible that this sketch may have inspired this shot. And then secondly, I haven't really seen this talked about anywhere yet, but a new addition to the title screen this update is that if you press the Y key on the keyboard while on the title screen while the game is running in windowed mode, the entire window will actually start to move around in a figure 8 path. And honestly, this is kind of wild. Definitely wasn't expecting this to start happening when I started mashing the keys on my keyboard hoping to find a new secret. And this actually stacks, as every time you press the Y key, the window will start to get more and more erratic until… yeah. Now initially, I thought that was it, and besides still being able to press the 9 key during a song to toggle the old face graphic, it seemed like pressing the 7 key to access the debug menu during a song was removed, and the secret Tankman animation that you could access on the main menu by pressing the 8 key was also removed. But as it turns out, although it's not the same way to access them, these things were actually vastly improved in this update. Right off the bat though, you might have a difficult time accessing these unless you go to the controls option and go all the way down to the debug section where you'll want to rebind these keys to whatever you deem best. And yeah, these are actually three more fleshed out debug menus that we can access now. The first one of these can be activated by pressing the assigned key while on the menu screen, and this will actually bring up a debug menu from which we can access a whole bunch of options, including the input offset test I went over earlier, a test of the sticker transition animation, you can open the crash log folder from this menu, and then we got the real good stuff, a chart editor, an animation editor, as well as a stage editor. So first, the chart editor is actually the same thing that's brought up if you press the second assigned debug key while in a song, and this is basically a new and improved version of the chart editor that was left over in previous updates. And here you can once again change up or make your own chart creations to your heart's content, you can set up battles between whichever characters you want, and more. I just think it's really cool to still have the option for this level of customizability in this game. You can make super easy charts, super difficult ones, pit Pico up against the monster, whatever you want. Then next up we have the animation editor, and this is a really cool debug menu that lets you view a bunch of sprite sheets of all the different characters, and it also lets you view and edit all of their animations. And here you can also see some of the animations that otherwise aren't used in the game. Now personally, I didn't mess around with any of the animations much, and mostly just used this as an animation viewer, but still it was really fun to just browse around in this menu with all the characters and their animations. And then lastly on this main debug menu here is the stage editor, and although unfortunately this option doesn't seem to be functional on this menu, I'm quite positive that this was intended to lead to the same debug functionality that the last keybind from the controls menu brings you to during a song. And this essentially lets you not only move the camera, so to speak, around a given stage to see it from new perspectives, but by holding the control key and clicking and dragging around on the level's objects, you can actually move them around too. 
And as indicated here, this editor doesn't seem fully functional though, as stuff like disabling the layers in a level by toggling these checkboxes here doesn't seem to do anything yet. But regardless, it was definitely an interesting experience to look around and move objects in this game's levels. Overall, I'm super excited that not only did the developers still leave these debugging features in the game, but they made them pretty simple to access too. So if you're interested in messing around with these features yourself, I hope you do, and I hope the developers keep leaving stuff like this in, in future updates. Now although that's basically it for the Weekend 1 update stuff for this video, since it's almost been 3 years since I've covered this game, there's been a whole bunch of other stuff like more concept sketches and animations found within the game's source code. For starters, there's this unused animation of the girlfriend absolutely eating it as she face plants into the ground, and this animation is found in a file titled GF Assets. Now based on the color of the ground that she meets here, it's very likely that this one was once planned to be used somewhere in week 7, with a strong contender believed to be after Pico knocks her off the speaker. And to add to that, there are actually two frames from the animation of Pico kicking her that go unused as well. Then next, we have a few things related to Tank Man, first of which is an unused animation of him seemingly doing a dance similar to that which Skid and Pump do during their idle animation in week 2. Then we also got graphics for this animation found within the file for Tank Man's lip syncing graphics known as Mouth Sensor. As the name implies, this was very likely meant to be slapped on top of Tank Man's mouth whenever he swears should the naughtiness option be disabled in the game. But yeah, even with naughtiness turned off in the settings, there's still blood and swearing, so I'm not really sure what this option changes, if anything. And apparently, this is just something they're working on adding in a future update. And interestingly, to add to this, there are also some unused censored versions of the animations of the tank men getting blasted by Pico during the stress song of week 7, where a non-disclosed blue liquid that's definitely not blood pops out of the tank men. Once again, as of this current update, these still aren't used even with naughtiness disabled, but it's thought that these are meant for that if that option ever does get developed and implemented. And now lastly for this video, we've gone over a whole bunch of concept sketches in my previous videos, but quite a few more have been found and documented since then. The first set of these are concept sketches for week 5 stop at the mall, and here we can see some concept sketches of stuff to be placed in the background including some posters, including this one of Ninja Muffin. We got some store signs, a plushy stand featuring Rolus, an original character that as of yet I don't think we've officially seen in the series. And then there's this sketch that seems to be slightly further along, as it more so resembles how the background is seen in the final version of week 5 with the Christmas tree and escalators. Now the final concept sketch for this week here appears to reveal a much different idea for this week that ended up being scrapped. Not only can we see that the original concept didn't include the girlfriend's parents at all, but rather this unknown basic looking opponent wearing a Santa hat, but apparently, there was also a planned gimmick that was scrapped for both battlers to actually be riding on the mall's escalators, and the loser of the battle would go down the escalator, while on the other hand, the winner would go up. The final version of this week of course went for the more traditional approach to the battle seen throughout the weeks, but honestly, this seems like it could have made for a pretty cool mechanic. Now moving on to week 6 stuff, it looks like there was originally once planned to be an intro cutscene for this week, and although these concept sketches aren't left over in the source code, they were actually shown off during a stream by one of the main developers, Phantom Arcade. Apparently, the cutscene would start off by featuring the totally not PlayStation 1 that's also seen in the week selection menu of the story mode here, and then both the boyfriend and girlfriend would for whatever reason get sucked into the video game world. Although this doesn't really provide all too much more context of why any of this happens, I guess this would have still been better than week 6 kinda just starting in the game world. And oddly enough, the spiral effect seen in this sketch actually did make its way into the game's source code files, but strangely it's found in week 7's file of the boyfriend holding the girlfriend. And then, for week 7 we have this layout template for Pico's positioning during the final song there, 
And then, more interestingly, there's also this early alternate version of the girlfriend's death animation for that track as well for when she's being held by the boyfriend. Instead of the red, more stylized design seen in the final release of this week, here she's seen green, we can see these green balls flowing through her, as well as what looks like an outline of some of her innards with these suggesting that she might have once been planned to have gotten electrocuted or something during the death animation. In the final, or I guess I should say current, cut of this week, it's only the boyfriend who gets hurt when losing the battle as the girlfriend doesn't appear to take any damage or anything, which seems quite different than whatever the idea was for this. Now next, not really a concept sketch, but hidden in the animation file for the secret Guitaru Man retry screen that apparently only has a 1 in a thousand chance of appearing, is not only this image of the original Guitaru Man retry screen, which was obviously used as a reference, but there's also a troll face. I guess this must have been left as a little secret to find for those that went digging around in the game's source files, which is always something I appreciate devs doing. And now lastly for this video, we got several additional character sketches made by Phantom Arcade that are found normally unseen once again in the file for Tank Man's lip syncing. These include a sketch of Sackboy from Little Big Planet, Nicole from Rhythm Doctor, we got a sketch of Pump and Skid looking all sussed out, titled Stumped and Shid. There's this sketch of a dog that apparently is going to be an enemy in week 123,546. There's Tank Man strangling the boyfriend for apparently leaking some week 7 content. A sketch of Pico in a maid outfit. There's a collection of doodles including sketches of Parappa the Rapper, Pico with the boyfriend and girlfriend, and Oddish thinking about ending it all, a sad looking ghost crying over seemingly a loved one. There's a sketch of this girl who honestly I'm not sure where she's from but I'm sure some of you will let me know down in the comments, as well as the baby. Let's go. This meme feels super dated now, which really just puts into perspective just how long ago the week 7 update was. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is a sketch of I Am Mom? No really, this sketch is titled Suck Your Mom's Dick Tetra Bit Gaming. Uh, okay, well, at least now I can die happy knowing that my mother and I are somewhat canon in the Friday Night Funkin' universe. Well, I guess this says you are mom and not your mom, but either way, I'm just glad that she doesn't look like this. Anyways, my friends, that about wraps it up for Friday Night Funkin' once again, I guess at least until the next update, or whatever the plans are leading up to the full release of the game, and I hope you enjoyed. Now honestly, I don't know what you all think, but I think it'll be pretty tough to top the absolute mountain of mods that were made for this game over the years, so hopefully the Funkin' team cooked up something solid for the full release. Anyways, till then, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for Bebo bopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.